Hello my beautiful friends, it's Amanda here and it's time for my January favorites. I love doing monthly favorites. It's sort of an old school YouTube tradition went out of fashion for a while. I think it's starting to gain popularity again. I've kind of been doing it this whole time just because I genuinely really like sharing the things that I enjoyed each month with you. And it's not always makeup favorites, although my favorites typically are focused on beauty products. I mean, that's what we're all here for anyway. But I like to share things like my favorite books and skincare, nail polish, things like that too. My favorites tend to be a mixture of rediscovered older favorites and a bunch of new products. We've got drugstore, we've got high-end, we've got a little bit of everything. It genuinely is just whatever I liked this month. So let's start with my favorite book from January. I do a reading challenge every year where I try to read at least 40 books every single year. My favorite book that I finished this month is this one. It's called The Ocean at the End of the Lane. It's written by Neil Gaiman, Gaiman, this guy, Neil G. This was a really quick read. As you can see, it's pretty short. This was sort of a different book for me. It's hard to describe. It's not quite horror because it's not gory, although it is kind of spooky in a fantastical way. I kind of liked it that I didn't really know what it was. I definitely like offbeat books. This really fit the bill for me. It's not really a mystery. It's not really magical realism. It's sort of in a league of its own. It was very enjoyable. If you like offbeat fiction and you don't mind being a little bit scared, like monster scary, not murder scary, then I would highly recommend this book. It came highly recommended to me and I agree this is a really really good one. Let's talk about something that we definitely don't talk about that much on this channel and that is fragrance. I know there are some fragrance junkies out there, perfume collectors. That's definitely not me. I am find one scent and stick to it for probably far too long kind of person. And I have a new favorite scent. For the longest time, my go-to was YSL Black Opium. And now my new go-to is this one that I realize doesn't show up very well on camera. This is from NARS. This is the Audacious fragrance. I think I like this because it does have a similar scent profile to YSL Black Opium. It's kind of spicy, it's kind of musky. First of all, let's just call it like it is. This is a really expensive fragrance. High-end fragrances are always quite pricey. This one is $180 for the bottle, so I'm sharing it with you because I really, really like it. But fair warning, this is a super expensive product and I kind of feel weird about sharing things that are this pricey but it's it's been my favorite so there it is. I'm gonna read you the notes from the NARS website because I'm not very good at describing scents for the perfume lovers, perfume fanatics out there. It will make a lot more sense if I just tell you what the notes are. Okay so the top note is white frangipani and smoke of incense. The middle note is tiare flower, ylang ylang oil, essential oil, sandalwood, and then the base note is white cedar essential oil and white musk. It lasts for a really long time and it stays smelling really good on my skin for a long time. So it's ridiculously expensive, I realize that, but I really like it, so I thought I'd tell you about it. Now, let's balance that out with my favorite nail color of the month. This is from Sally Hansen. It's the Insta Dry Matte Formula, but I always put a glossy top coat on top because I don't really like matte nails, I like shiny nails. So you can make this into a shiny finish with a top coat. The shade is Rose Flush. It's this really pretty iridescent golden rose shade. I wear this on top of all different colors. I really like this on top of just a plain pink polish. 
It's so soft and pretty and it just really looks cute on the nails. You'll start to see as I go through my makeup favorites that I definitely had a really soft, pink, glowy, I wish it was spring kind of aesthetic going on in January. This rose flush shade fit perfectly with a lot of the looks that I was feeling this month. Before we move on to the face makeup favorites, I did want to mention these earrings. I've been wearing them in a bunch of my videos lately and a lot of you guys were commenting how much you liked them. I've really been liking these too. I got them from Amazon and I think they're so cool. These are like printed onto wood so they're very lightweight even though they're larger earrings. They're not super heavy. I just love all of these colors. Even though they're pretty bold and graphic, they go with so many of my outfits and they really made me feel a little bit more dressed up and a little bit more put together. Especially you see right now what I'm wearing. I'm wearing a queen t-shirt <laughs> and just like a big old grandpa sweater and I feel like these earrings just cute up any outfit that I'm wearing since I dress like this all the time <laughs> anyway. I'm actually gonna link my Amazon storefront. I just created an Amazon storefront with a whole bunch of my favorite things. So if you wanna check that out, these earrings will be there. I have everything separated out into lists so it's not just like one big overwhelming page of stuff I like. I have jewelry, I have t-shirts, I have beauty favorites, and a bunch of favorite books. You can find a bunch of my favorite things that I get from Amazon on my storefront. If you're interested in that, you can go and check it out. That is the kind of thing that I will earn a commission from, but it doesn't charge you extra. I just wanted to sort of put that out there. I'll start putting my Amazon store linked in my videos now. So if you wanna see what I like on Amazon, you can go check that out. But these earrings are a favorite and they are from Amazon. Well, that was cute. All right, let's talk about face stuff now. One thing I have been using every single time I do my makeup all month long is this Future Do Oil Hybrid Serum from Glossier. I've been using this as my primer with every single different foundation and concealer and everything that I use. I love the way this makes my skin look. I have very dry skin and I feel like this has just done wonders for me to keep me from looking dry and flaky and cracked and it does have kind of a glossy sheen to it but wearing it under other makeup particularly under foundation I love the way this makes my skin look if you are dry skin guy or gal I cannot recommend this highly enough I tested this on my skin on its own in my Glossier video when I first hauled this and I've been wearing this every single day since then I love it it's really good Speaking of looking dewy and glowy, my favorite highlighter this month is this one from Milani. This is the Baked Highlighter in the shade Dolce Perla. I got this in a big drugstore haul from Ulta and I have absolutely been loving this. I keep going back to it. It's soft and bright at the same time. I don't know how that works, but the Milani Baked Formula is just totally worth the hype. I already liked their baked blushes. Wasn't crazy about the bronzers, but I did like the blushes. But these highlighters are probably their best yet. I'm gonna link the video where I demoed this because you have to see this glow in action. I'm not wearing it today. I'm actually testing a different highlighter today. But, oh, this is so, so pretty. The color of this one just has a little like icy pink shift to it. I don't know. See what I mean? It's bright and soft at the same time. How do they do it? I don't know. Let's talk about eyeshadow palettes. I have sort of an unlikely combo. These are two palettes that I wouldn't have necessarily thought would be great together, but just by happy accident, I used them both in the same eye look one day and I've been loving pairing these up ever since. It's the ColourPop Blush Crush Palette and the NARS Afterglow Eyeshadow Palette. Blush Crush has such a soft, pretty, pinky pastel kind of vibe to it, and NARS is definitely more of a warm neutral type of palette. I do have reviews on both of these, 
but of course you're not going to see them used together in the same video. But these two color palettes actually complement each other and kind of complete each other in a really amazing way. One of the issues that I had with this Blush Crush palette was that it just didn't have enough deep shades. I found myself wanting a darker shade that wasn't just a really glittery matte. These happened to be sitting side by side on my vanity, so I just grabbed this and started using some of the darker brown shades in here. And it kind of hit me that these weirdly <laughs> go together in a really fun way because this Afterglow palette does pull in some of these pink shades. They sort of make a really nice complement together. I felt like Blush Crush needed deeper shades and I felt like Afterglow just needed a little bit more color. I didn't think these two would work together but they actually have some sort of overlap. If you look at the like matte peachy pink kind of shades here, we've got a little soft peachy gold shimmer moment that overlaps, but Blush Crush is a little bit lighter, a little bit more pastel, and Afterglow is warmer and definitely has some of those deeper shades. I always think it's fun to combine two palettes, especially when one just needs a little bit something extra. Would that be an interesting video about like companion palettes or palettes that I like to use together? Let me know if that's something you'd be into. Lastly, Let's talk about my lip favorites. I have two lip colors here that I went back to over and over again throughout the month of January, and it would not be a makeup just for fun favorites if they weren't both medium warm nude shades, which they are. First is the color that I'm wearing in today's video. This is the shade Torrid. It's the NARS Afterglow Balm, and this one isn't really a medium warm nude. I mean, it kind of is, but it's a little bit coral too really branching out. The Afterglow Balms were in my Best of 2019 series. I love them. They feel great. They look great. If I'm going to drop a bunch of money on a lip product, I am going to spend it on something like the NARS Afterglow Lip Balms because I know I'm going to use it to filth and use it up and I'm really going to get my money's worth. I've been reaching for these for months and months, but in January I kept going back to the shade Torrid. And a new discovery for me, but a product that's been on the market for a really long time, is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Lip Glosses. I had them on my Sephora Loves list for years before I actually broke down and bought some. I purchased two during Black Friday, and this is the one that I keep wearing. I love this one. It's called Caramel, Caramel, wh wherever you're from. Well, I mean, that one's kind of pink too. They both have the essence of warm, medium nude. These glosses are so freaking pigmented. It's a little bit shocking. I did not expect such an intense color payoff from a gloss. And it doesn't feel gross and goopy and sticky. And, you know, nobody really likes that feeling on the lips. I don't get that from this. I feel like the color looks gorgeous. This is just the right shade. It looks great with really light, neutral, quick eye makeup, but it's also enough of a punch that it can really stand up to a bolder eye look as well. And the ultimate sign of a favorite, I had to go to my purse and get both of these out to bring them down here to film. So that's when you know a lip product is your favorite when it lives in your bag and then the little logo starts to wear off. That's a true favorite. I always love to hear what your favorite things were, not just makeup products. Always want to hear your favorite books that you've been reading. Tell us everything that you love, new clothes that you found, jewelry, fragrance, skincare. We want to hear it all, even snacks. You give me such good suggestions and a lot of the things that I end up enjoying and loving and buying are from your suggestions. So thank you for that. Keep them coming. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye. That would be cool. Hmm, should have got some water. When in doubt, more lip balm. And we need to acknowledge that. It's the audacious, audacious. Okay, I channeled a little Kathleen lights there for a second. Frangipani? Frangipini? Ah, crap. How do you say that? This is way too hard.
Frangapani. 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 Knowledge is power, people. Lang Lang. Oh man, is that how you say that? Why am I so bad at this? Yulong, Yulong. Yulong, Yulong. Really? Okay, we don't care. Just tell us. Yulang, Yulang. Yulang, Yulang. Yulang, Yulang. Yulang, Yulang. Great. It's a mystery. Girl, you are a hot mess. Literally so much useless footage today. Love that for me. Please don't let me drop these. One of the problems, one of it, mm, 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 try to keep ourselves together here, Amanda, okay? Had with the glush crush. Dang it. So, bada bing, bada boom. We got palette friends. Could be fun, could be fun. Did you meet a cool dog this month? Tell us who your favorite dog of the month is. I mean, that be, might be a little bit far, but I do love dogs, so, you know, why not? My favorite dog of the month is always the same because it's my dog because she's the best. Anyway, back to not rambling. Why did I feel like that was the most awkward favorites video? That's what happens when you take a break because, you know, I don't do December favorites. I do yearly favorites, so it feels like forever when I take a month off of monthly favorites. Um, yeah. Okay, I gotta go edit and wash my face. Do you like my makeup today? It's from a product that you've already seen on my channel now. So, not that exciting, but it's exciting to me. <laughs> anyway, okay. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.